This video is not easy for me to make, but it's necessary. This is going to be about Sylvia Brown, who I toured with for many years in many different places. And she and I had the same publisher. This is not going to be gossip because that's a sin. Uh, this is going to be documented with showing clips, video clips, and also screenshots from her books and interviews of why Sylvia Brown's teachings, much like my own before I was saved, is unbiblical, it's spiritually dangerous, and if people do not repent from following this path that she was teaching, mixing some truth with uh, demonic lies, as we're going to show in this video, um, it can lead people to, to hell for eternity. And that's not to scare people, that's to tell you the gospel truth, because Jesus talked about hell more than anybody else, and and we need to know this. It's a wake-up call more than anything. In Ephesians 5.11, we are told to have nothing to do with darkness at all, but instead expose it. So I'm joined today by my good friend and sister in Christ, Jen Nizza. You've seen her before. Her contact details are in the description below. And she's here to hold my hand because it's admittedly much easier for me to expose false teachings of people I've never met than it is for me to expose the false teachings of people I knew. And Sylvia Brown passed away, um, but her books are still being sold and she's still got fan clubs and she still has people who are following her work. So this is to expose her old work so that those who have ears to hear will turn away from it and turn to God's word. So Jen, thanks for being with me today. Hey Dee, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for doing this video. I give you a lot of uh, credit actually. It does take a lot of courage and I know it's hard for you. I'm happy to hold your hand through it. And um, I know you're going to hold my hand in the future yes. when I have to make these too, but thank you so much for the work that you're doing and for your ministry. I really appreciate it. We're not here to judge people. That's not our job, but we are here to compare what is being taught to what God gave us the truth in his word. And we can see that Sylvia and many others, including me before I was saved and you too, before you were saved, uh, we're, we're pointing people away from the true Jesus and his word. Right. And you know, what's really concerning is that um, Sylvia Brown uh, used a lot of words that sound um, even godly. I mean, one of her books, End of Days, Predictions and Prophecies about the about end of world. Yeah, Kim Kardashian, of course, was she's the one who made that passage famous from her book that she was predicting a uh, a flu like phenomenon in twenty around twenty twenty, and it sure seemed accurate. But as with everything, you need to put it into context. So let's just back up, and we'll have context. So first of all, uh, Sylvia said that she was raised Catholic, but in some of her materials, she says that she was raised uh, by an Episcopalian and also by a Lutheran. So she has that that. Christian background, and she does use Christianese, Christian terms. She even quotes from the Bible, but of course, so did the devil in the temptation of Jesus. So, and I did too before I was saved. So, just because someone quotes from the Bible does not mean that they are saved or a Christian. We have to be careful. Um, Sylvia, when I was touring with her, um, was very isolated from the rest of us. She was not sociable at all. I, I was backstage with her quite a bit. Um, and I'll talk more about that as we go through this video. But just a, one thing I just want to show you that kind of gives insight into how Sylvia thinks about herself is from an interview. She, she was asked, do you know of any psychics more powerful than you? She says, I don't pay any attention to any of that. I've been told I'm the icon and that I opened the door to anybody else and plowed the field for anybody else. When I started coming out, she means as a psychic, everybody came out. So she... Um, she said that she started psychic work. And of course that was in the seventies. Right. And this is how she felt about herself. I remember she had posters at our events and it said along the lines of Sylvia Brown, the world's most accurate psychic, the world's most um, well-known psychic. She definitely had a very elevated view of herself. And we know what the Bible says about pride. So she said she got all of her information from her spirit guide, Francine, who came to her as a little girl. Uh, the interviewer asked her how the average person, meaning someone not like Sylvia, who's, could find their spirit guide. Sylvia says they can go to bed at night and ask them to come in dreams and keep talking to them. 
Uh, my spirit guide, Francine, says the more you talk to them, the easier it is for them to come in. Now, you and I both have warned many times, these are not spirit guides. These are fallen angels. The Bible says that when the devil, who was an angel originally, and who was competing with God, very vain, very prideful, fell from heaven, he took a third of the angels with him, the fallen angels, and that's what are demons. And hell was created for the devil and demons, uh, and people who follow them go to hell with them. So Francine, let's just talk about her for a minute, and then we'll get back to the 2020 prediction, uh, because this is all in context. In her book, The Mystical Life of Jesus, which we're going to get into because it's heretical, it's just absolutely horrible. Um, Sylvia claims that when she was eight years old, her spirit guide, Francine, may, first made contact with her. And, the, and she said, supposedly this demon said to Sylvia, I come from God and you have nothing to fear. And we know from the Bible that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, you and I, before we were saved, we didn't get that. We thought, God, he's just all love. There's no wrath. Everyone goes to heaven. And so that's a, a big mark of deception right there is that belief that God is love. We know that. Apostle John says that. But we also know that God's attributes also include wrath. And holiness, uh, the and and his justice, and that he demands perfection from us, which we none of us can achieve. We're all sinners, and so the only one who could achieve that was God Himself, the Son Jesus, who died in our place as the sinless Lamb of God. So Francine is the one who Sylvia blames <laughs> for her prophecy or credits for her prophecies, and that includes the 2020 prediction. Sylvia said. Uh, that when she was in her, when she was a little kid, uh, her teacher started a group hypnosis exercise in the class. She went under easily. That's kind of interesting. It shows she's very susceptible, very vulnerable. Uh, then for the first time, Francine came into my body, she said. So she was possessed. Oh boy. She, wow. she admits it. This is possession, you guys. Okay. She's possessed by a demon. Uh, Francine quickly introduced herself to my astonished friends, gave them a few tidbits of information so they'd be convinced it was not me. You and I both know, and we've talked about this, that mm -hmm. the demons can give us very accurate information. And she said um, that this upset her. She was confused, angry, and frightened. Francine immediately began talking to me to calm me down. She logically explained that she had to do this to show me my trance mediumship ability and that it was not harmful. And then Right after she says that in her book, she goes into that there's no such thing as the virgin birth, no such thing, mm -hmm. that, that Jesus did not die on the cross. He was not crucified. He was crucified, but he didn't die. Uh, it, it was exactly like the Bible said, how the Roman soldiers were paid off to say that he didn't die. Uh, Sylvia Brown, in her books, she makes it very obvious that she's jealous of Dan Brown, who famously wrote... The Da Vinci Code and uh, oh, the wow. and the book about demons and angels. So Sylvia Brown, uh, in her books, has Da Vinci Code theories that she's taking credit for from Francine instead of admitting that, you know, uh, I'm jealous of Dan Brown's success. So she talks about in her books and here's screenshots to back up what I'm saying. This is not gossip. She says that uh, Jesus and Mary Magdalene were married that they had a courtship where they wrote letters to each other, that they had a child. And just like Dan Brown, that that's the, uh, the rosy cross. And that he, she says he, she said, Francine said that Jesus did not die on the cross, that he died in France. What? Yep. Which is another way of uh, recognizing a false teacher is how they identify Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us to test the spirits to see if they're from God. And so far, in just the first few minutes of you speaking about Sylvia, nothing that she is saying lines up with the word of God, mm -hmm. or nothing that she said lines up with the word of God. And if you're looking at her books, or you were thinking about getting her book, I encourage you to not get it and put it down because you can see nothing is pointing to the real Jesus Christ. That's right. Yeah. 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 First, first John 4 tells us to mm -hmm. test the spirit. Remember that uh, the demons always mix in truth with lies. So there'll be a little bit of truth mixed in with lies that always point you away from Jesus, the real Jesus. They point you away from joining a biblically solid local church. 
um, Sylvia Brown in here goes on and on and on how she says, just like I used to say before I was saved, that Constantine and the Roman Catholic Church uh, corrupted the Bible. She quotes from the so-called lost books of the Bible, even though they've been completely discredited as being fakes that were written hundreds and hundreds of years after the apostles died. Uh, she says that the Bible was written by illiterates. That's something that the false prophet Mary Baker Eddy that I was raised with used to say. And she says that uh, we cannot trust the Bible. We can trust Francine, she says, her spirit guide. We can trust her. So she started her own church, which is still going, uh, Nova Spiritus. And she called herself a Christian Gnostic, a Christian Gnostic. That's an oxymoron, Jen, because Gnosticism is the opposite of Christianity. I mean, you could do a whole uh, month-long study on your videos of Gnosticism. The core of Gnosticism is based on the Antichrist inversion of good and evil. Leading ancient Gnostics like the Valentinians inverted the creation event, claiming that Yahweh, the creator God, was evil, and therefore the resulting creation and all matter was also evil. They taught that the human race was imprisoned by Yahweh in evil human bodies. They taught that when Satan deceived Eve and told her that she could become God by partaking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that it was really a good thing and that it really wasn't Satan but the goddess Sophia who used the serpent to instruct Eve. Satan through Gnosticism became the savior and God became the devil. Through this cosmic shell game, Satan was able to deceive Gnostics through mass Gnostic inversion, effectively turning God into the devil and the devil into the savior. A Gnostic basically um, believes in a, a mother and a father God. Sylvia Brown wrote a book about mother God. She said it's Asna is the name she gave to mother God. She frequently at her workshops would teach people to pray to mother God. She said that the Roman Catholic Church and the early um, apostolic fathers were intimidated by women, so they purposely made uh, our our God, our our God, our Creator, into a single man. I used to teach that too before I was saved, and I apologize and repent for that. Um, it's this is just shocking stuff. So um, the 2020 prediction. Um, many people say that when they look at the description, it's really talking about SARS, uh, and she made a lot of other predictions that. The, her believers look past. She said that um, in 2020, there'll be a tiny digital device will be placed in the frontal lobes of the brain. She said, blindness and deafness will be a thing of the past by 2020. Oh, wow. Did yes. that happen? I don't think so. No. So the truth and the lies are always mixed together, aren't they? I mean, Genesis 3, the serpent did that. She was convinced, as was I back then, that uh, God is only love and that anyone who teaches any kind of fear, anything having to do with sin, repentance, hell, or Satan was trying to manipulate you and control you and get your money. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, you and I have both lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. I lost my mother just a few months ago, two days ago, as this filming, my brother and I went through her belongings. I'm grieving. It's when you're grieving, you want comfort. And Sylvia Brown seemed to offer the carrot on the stick of comfort. Mm -hmm. And she seemed to talk to your deceased loved ones. And she was just like when we did the Dolores Cannon video, mm -hmm. Sylvia Brown is a, she's a big woman, loud, um, walk into a room and she's dressed really loud. She had, you know, really loud clothing and she always had her hair, you know, real shocking color and long fingernails. Mm -hmm. um, and she, she just, she looked like what you'd think a psychic would look like. Mm -hmm. And so you'd sit there, if you didn't know any better, you'd think, well, she knows what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. She's so authoritative. Right. She seems so confident people, pe right. With that authoritative tone. So it, it makes it more believable for some reason when people are hearing that. And when they're already vulnerable, like you, like you said, but the whole thing. So we're talking about the predictions though. And you're, you're pointing mm -hmm. out how, she made a prediction that seemed like it, you know, SARS or what have you, and a lot of predictions that um, did not happen that, that you mentioned, and some, of course, for the future. But what people need to know is that demons can make predictions and they, and they can do it well. 
um, were not difficult to study, guys, and demons are powerful. Um, Ephesians 6 and 12 tells us about the different powers, the principalities. Demons are intelligent um, and they're powerful. They can manipulate things and do things. Um, people, we can make predictions. If I, I say this all the time, if you know, if you, you're mar we're married, and if your husband does something Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on Friday, you can predict he's going to do yeah. it with like a 98% mm -hmm. um, accuracy, but the point is only God knows. Here we can read what Sylvia Brown wrote about a severe pneumonia-like illness around 2020 that would spread around the globe. That certainly sounds like what happened until we get to the part where she says that this illness will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived, and that has not happened. It is still with us, unfortunately. We can also see that she wrote that in 2020, that there would be higher salaries for teachers that would attract more teachers and that there would never be more than 15 students per classroom. Unfortunately, that has not happened. Uh, as we know, these classes are very crowded and teachers underpaid. We can also see she wrote that there would be increasingly stringent requirements for Senate candidates. There would be a flat tax and an end of IRAs and mutual funds by the end of 2020. That has not happened. She also said that in 2020, we would never have any more U.S. presidents and that between 2010 and 2020, a president, a U.S. president would die in office of a heart attack, which also has not happened. The only part that she got correct is that the American public is fed up with politics. So she did get that right, for sure. Uh, she also said that by the end of 2010, there would be no more common cold. And if anyone got a cold, they would step into a cubicle for five to six minutes, which would give them some sort of uh, therapy to cure their cold. We also know from Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22, that anyone who gives a prophecy that is not true, that does not come to pass, is a false prophet. So we can see that there are false prophecies in Sylvia Brown's books. You know, uh, because I toured with her, I went to quite a few of her workshops, and she she had a very hard heart from what she was saying. I mean, only God knows people's heart, but it sure it sure appeared she had a hard heart. She she seemed to gleefully spill out these um, predictions of World War III. She would talk about that constantly, and she would say, and she had that real gravelly voice, you know. And she would say, uh, "She's dead. Get over it." And and just tell people to snap out of it, get over it. And it just, it, there was not that warmth and compassion. Am I gonna make it in the, in the movie business? No. <laughs> Honey, I didn't know, you're not gonna win the lottery. I'm not. No, you had a dream about me maybe because you wanted to win the lottery, but you're not gonna win the lottery. No, you have to go to a doctor, you have a problem, and I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Yes, sir, you had a question for Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia, I wanna know, um, the relationship that I'm in now, what's the future for it? And am I going to have kids? Is the relationship he's in right now going to work and will he have kids? No, it's not going to work and he's going to find somebody else to have kids. Oh. <laughs> and can you tell me my spirit guide's name? Yeah, your spirit guide's name is um, Lena. Mm. Okay, thank you. Can you tell me where my love life's going? Nowhere. <laughs> he was so, so ill. Terry Flans knew her son Mark was dying of cancer. He was in a coma. But she prayed he would win the fight of his life. And I thought the old Mark was coming back. But that just lasted one day, and then from then on, it was just downhill. And he kept getting worse. <laughs> So two weeks ago, Mrs. Flans went to the St. Louis appearance of self-proclaimed psychic Sylvia Brown, silently pleading for help. I got to talk to her. And my number was the first one picked. And I was so excited. Unbelievable. I told her my son was dying. And I was wanting to know if he was going to live. And she matter-of-factly said, yes, he's going to live. My son is in the hospital. I'm the first one. And we know that any way that people save him. Yeah, they will save him. Ooh. Brown told her that Mark would get a miraculous treatment and would be better by the end of the month, that Flans should not bring him home for hospice care, 
but leave him in the hospital. My wife was sent him home with us. You know, keep him there for a while. I wanted to believe her. Yeah, I believed her. I don't give a damn what the doctors say, Brown told Flans. Your son will survive. He starts regaining his strength even at the end of this month. They're not going to give him that long. They're only giving him a kind of a damn. Two days later, Mark was dead. Mark didn't want to die in the hospital. He wanted to go home. But Sylvia Brown told us that he was going to live to the end of the month and he'd get better. My daughter-in-law wanted to take him home with hospice. But she was so, so negative because she thought she was doing the wrong thing because of what Sylvia Brown said. She taught that uh, love your neighbor is the most important thing Jesus taught and that we're here to be loving to each other. But she was very open that um, she and her family member didn't speak anymore, um, her choice, and that uh, and that was okay. And she, she taught against forgiveness quite a bit. Uh, that there was no need to forgive. In 2002, Brown informed uh, parents of an 11-year-old boy who had been who had disappeared earlier that year that he was kidnapped by a dark-skinned Hispanic man with dreadlocks and was now deceased. Well, he was found alive in 2007. His kidnapper was Caucasian and short-haired. You have done everything, almost everything conceivably possible to at least try to find a clue, something from organizing search parties and the community has gotten involved and still yet not even a whim, is there? Is there any whim at all of what happened? There's absolutely no evidence to support any, any kind of theory. He left the house, I'm sorry, he left the house at what time? 1.15. And there were some children who said that they saw him at what time? Around four. There's been sightings up to 4.30. But he was only traveling to a friend's house, which was seven-tenths of a mile away, so he could have gotten there in five or six minutes. So what do you think? And none of his other friends anywhere in, around saw him, correct, between that time? No, most the friends that he played with normally on a regular basis didn't see him that day. Um, there were just some other kids that he normally didn't play with that have seen him. Uh, who, does, who did he know? Or who do you know of by the name of Keith? Keith? Is it a kid or an uh, adult? No, no, it's a young kid. Because there's somebody by the name of Keith, a blonde kid, who saw him after this 4.30 period. Doesn't, doesn't ring any bells. Well, have well to I'd ask. Him. Ask around, because he doesn't live that far from where the friend is. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. He wasn't a best friend, but he sort of goes in and out of the group. Because he was picked up in a, in a blue colored sedan by um, a guy by the name of um, Michael, and the last name sounds like. Is this somebody who lives in the area? Somebody passing through. Somebody the area? passing through the area. So it wasn't that area. I'm sorry. What was that question? Was it anybody that Sean knew? No. Was he abducted when you say picked up? Yeah, ab abducted, yeah. yeah. He was grabbed? Grabbed. Is yeah. there any better description of the vehicle other than just a blue the sedan? The vehicle is a blue sedan, and I think it's a Chevrolet. Uh, it's an older Chevrolet. It reminds me of what I had years ago, you know, with sort of with the tail fins on them, which was, what, around 58, 59? So an old model car. Old model car. I think they called them, what were they, Impalas? Oh, were they Impalas? Impala. Impala. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it was Impala. Is there any kind of a description of the person driving the car? Yeah, the, the guy was um, dark-skinned, um, although he wasn't black, he was more uh, Hispanic looking. Um, had uh, real long, dark hair, and strange enough, Hispanic, but he had dreadlocks. Um, he was... Um, really tall and really almost like what you think a basketball player's build would be. Can you tell how far from the area he was taken? Maybe about 20 miles. But he's still within a 20 mile radius even he's now? He's still within a 20 mile radius of, let's say, 
here's where you are, 20 mile radius, but it's really southwest of where you are. Southwest. So whatever is southwest, because it looks like this is, here we go again with the wooded, with the, you know, the wooded area. So southwest of you. Is there any landmarks around? Yeah, strangely enough, there are two jagged boulders, which look really misplaced because everything is trees, and then all of a sudden you've got these stupid boulders sitting there. And he could be found near He's there. near the boulders. Is he still with us? Do you see the bicycle anywhere? I think the... See, here's what's strange. I think the, the, the bicycle is in another state in a dump. Let me take a little break. We'll be back right after this. Thankfully, Sean Hornbeck was found last week alive and well. His alleged abductor, Michael Devlin, is not Hispanic, and he didn't have dreadlocks at the time of the abduction. But she was terribly wrong about the most important detail of all. Hearing that was one of the hardest things we ever had, had to hear. The search for Sean was diverted, according to his parents, based on the misinformation Brown had given, costing the effort valuable man hours. Sean's parents, Craig and Pam Akers, also say Brown offered to help them for money. She did this again and again, as you mentioned, the Amanda Berry story, uh, mm -hmm. which was just so painful. And in November 2004, um, she's on Montella Williams' show, and she's, she is talking to the mom, Amanda Berry. She disappeared 19 months earlier. She's gone, honey. Do you know where she's at? In the house or under the house. Almost nine years ago, Amanda Berry's mom went on the Montel Williams show where resident psychic Sylvia Brown spoke of Amanda. I don't think I'll ever see her again. Yeah, in heaven on the other side. The WMMS morning show in Cleveland reenacted the transcript. The host read the part of the psychic. I hate this when they're in water. She's not alive, honey. Not alive? Then who's this? I've been kidnapped and I've been missing for 10 years and I'm, I'm here, I'm free now. Amanda's mom is the one no longer alive. She came home from the psychic's reading telling the Cleveland Plain Dealer she was devastated. She died a little more than a year later after being hospitalized with pancreatitis. Now Sylvia Brown is getting ripped on social media. Brown is a grief vampire, nothing short of evil. Just it's just, it goes on and on and on. Um, you know, the devil's the father of lies. And I remember when I would do my readings, it's really accurate information would come through, but some information would come through. And I, and I could kind of feel in my gut that this was wrong to say, but I was trained as a psychic. You say whatever comes into your mind. And Sylvia Brown has quite the background, as do I. I I'm no angel before I was saved. You know, I had um, things that I was involved in, but this is, and we're all sinners, but she, she was convicted of fraud in the 1980s. Um, she, the FBI and local authorities began investigating Brown and her businesses over several bank loans that had caused sustained losses to banks. In 1992, Brown and her then husband were indicted on several charges of investment fraud and grand theft. And the Superior Court uh, of Santa Clara County, California, found Brown and her husband had sold securities in a gold mining venture under false pretenses. In at least one instance, they told a couple that their $20,000 investment was to be used for immediate operating costs. Instead, the money was transferred to an account for Sylvia Brown's Nirvana Foundation for Psychic Research. And Brown pleaded no contest to security fraud. So she's got a background in lying um, and, you know. Yeah, so you're kind of just showing, you know, I mean, the Bible tells us we'll be known if we're even Christian by the fruits of our spirit. So you're kind of just showing, you know, her character. We're not saying that we don't sin or, you know, that we're wonderful people. We admit to be sinners. And that's right. why we we know we need a savior, Jesus right. Christ. Um and yeah. we're also, I just want to make clear too, D, like we're not saying that because she got some of those things wrong, 
that um, she's just a bad psychic and other psychics are good if they get it all on the money. You know, we're not saying that. That's why we keep going back to the truth and lies. You're going to hear things that resonate. You're going to hear things that are true. And some of the predictions will happen too. That's not what we're saying. It's not based on what parts are true and what parts aren't. It's divination and it's communicating with demons. And Sylvia's, um, Sylvia's book still being out there is so concerning because once they started believing, okay, now there's something on her. She's great. She's wonderful. Let's read more. And then that led down that rabbit hole of destruction, just like we were. Absolutely. And again, you know, I taught lies too, before I was saved and my old books are still out there. Um, That's why I'm on social media every single day, exposing the new age. And on my Amazon page, author page, it says, do not buy my books. Just don't buy my books. And Sylvia um, the, her books are still out there without anyone except for a few of us warning people that, okay, you might find a little bit of comfort here, but at what price to your soul, what, you know, you get your comfort from reading the book of Psalms. That's the Psalm, Psalms are so comforting to read, read mm-hmm. the gospel of John. If, if you don't like the, you know, you think, well, it's all hellfire and brimstone gospel. Of John is really, it's called the love gospel because he yeah. uses the word love more than any of the mm-hmm. other apostles. And mm-hmm. so read the gospel of John, read Psalms. Um, what I just kind of want to back up and give a timeline of, of my history with Sylvia, because it's really interesting. Um, I was brought on to our publisher in 1993 um, with my doctoral dissertation that I'd written about the link between women who were abused and the later development of eating disorders, because that was my clinical specialty was treating eating disorders at the time. So I had this book called Losing Your Pound of Pain, Do Not Buy It. And it was bought by this publisher in 1993 and published later in 1994 and been re-released in 2002. And it's, and while I was editing and kind of finishing the book, turning it from a dissertation into a book, I had big psychic experiences uh, while I was at this publisher, but the publisher would not allow me to use the word psychic in the book. And, and, and the next year, uh, 1995, I had um, this armed carjacking experience where and it, it's a long story. Some people oh, who've been following right. me a while know about it, but I wrote about the armed carjacking. And that's when I fully just got into taking psychic development classes and, and doing psychic work. I shifted from being a, a, a psychotherapist to a psychic in 1995 after that experience. And And so I had this book come out in that time called The Lightworker's Way. And what's what's relevant is that the publisher would not let me use the word psychic on the subtitle or in the book. They would only let me use the word no to no. And the cover of the book was a photo of me uh, in this long kind of diaphanous, you know, goddess gown like we all wore in the new age. And I had a crystal cross I was wearing. I wore crystal crosses because I believed you could blend new age with Christianity. Mm -hmm. And that was my kind of statement piece. Like, okay, I've got crystal, but it's cross. So I'm both and you can do both. Mm -hmm. And, and so I was wearing this big old crystal cross on the cover of the light work away. Well, they airbrushed out the cross. They wouldn't allow that on the cover and they wouldn't allow me to use the word psychic. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Really weird. (laughs) Yeah, so that's in the 90s. Then, then Sylvia Brown started going on Montel Williams show, for those who don't remember, and I was on Montel Williams too. Montel Williams was um, in the era of uh, Phil Donahue and um, you know a lot of these talk shows that would, Oprah was on, of course, all these talk shows that would have us on and you would, you would give readings to the audience and then you would show your book cover and sell books and such. So Sylvia Brown became a very popular guest on the Montel Williams show, giving audience readings. And that's where she gave a lot of these false predictions that were tragic to parents who'd lost children. And, uh, and, and it was, it was noticed by my publisher who brought her on and had her start writing books for the publishing house uh, around, around 2000. And, And suddenly everything became books about psychics where before she was with the publishing house, we weren't allowed to use the word psychic because it was, it was kind of a a mind, body, spirit publisher. It was just about healing your mind, healing your body. 
uh, the publisher would always say, your thoughts create your reality, use your thoughts to heal yourself, et cetera. And then when Sylvia Brown came on, a whole bunch of psychics came on um, in, into our stable of authors. And that's when we started touring together. And so it would be uh, Sylvia Brown headlining along with me, Sonia Chukhat, and either John Holland or Gordon Smith. Those guys would kind of intermingle. And we went all around North America. Some of us went to Australia and Europe. We called it Psychics on Parade because they would have us in a they'd have us in a bus going from the hotel oh. to the <laughs> venue. And one after the other, we would stand and give readings to these audiences. And then Sylvia would be the last. She'd be the headliner. And um, after a stroke, they'd kind of wheel her out, you know, in her wheelchair and and such. And and she, we wouldn't socialize with her. The rest of us, we would go out in our off time. We'd go eat together, shop together. We hung out together. Sylvia was always by herself. Um, the only times I really ever saw her was when our publisher would have group dinners for all the authors and they'd be on Saturday nights. And, uh, and then after a while, they gave me the Saturday night time slot to speak. So I wasn't at those dinners anymore. But uh, there was this one time we were all sitting together and Sylvia, and, I, and I'm going to really hold back that I'm not gossiping, but she was, she was not kind to me. I just want to say that. And that's not my motivation for doing this at all. Uh, you know, if it, if it was, I would tell you stories to make her look really bad personally. Right. But um, she was unkind to me verbally at that table. And the woman who channels Abraham Hicks, um, Esther Hicks, who, which is another teacher we need to do a video on. I did mm -hmm. one comparing Esther Hicks work to Joel Osteen, but mm -hmm. Anyway, don't buy Abraham Hicks or The Secret or Law of Attraction. But Esther Hicks defended me against Sylvia Brown attacking me at that table. It was really interesting. And then uh, there was this time the day before thanks, our U.S. Thanksgiving, uh, Sylvia Brown and I spoke together in Australia. And so we were backstage. Um, she, she, had, she literally flew from California to Australia, got on stage, gave her talk, and then got back on the airplane and went back to California. Wow. Yeah. So she, she was um, intense like that. And there was things that happened I can't go into, unfortunately, because it'd be gossip. But anyway, <laughs> anyway um, she, she wouldn't do book signings. She, she was not a people person is my point at all. She okay. would just deliver these messages and she would say, oh, honey. Um, but mm -hmm. it was very gruff. And uh, she changed the landscape of my publisher. And now my publisher, of course, is all about witchcraft, mm -hmm. that progression of deception. My ex-publisher, I want to say, they fired me in 2017. When I, when I posted Deuteronomy 18 on my own mm -hmm. uh, Facebook page, and they said I was offending the witches that were their customers. Oh, wow. And that's why they fired me. So it's so different than the publisher that I was first with, um, and all of it before I was saved. And then, and then when I was saved, of course they fired me and such. So uh, the bottom line, you guys, is that Sylvia Brown, she seems to teach about things that are comforting. She uses some Bible verses, but it's all twisted. And if you haven't read your Bible yet, you've got to read it and compare everything to scripture. Otherwise you'll be deceived. Uh, was looking into some of Sylvia Brown's clips and she has something from 1992 um, when she was speaking to a live crowd and it's called uh, Our Thoughts Create Our Reality, which uh, makes perfect sense now hearing you say about um, the publisher that you guys had having that series. So I could see what you mean now by her harsh responses because she was referencing a story where a man said something about his negative intentions and now he's kind of like doomed don't quote me i'm going to send the i'm going to we're going to put the clip and she says i told him oh shut up i mean here you are so on one aspect you're about to talk about happiness and how to be worry free and um healing and how how she's helping people but her character is so off-putting the guy said, oh, now you caused it. There you said it. I said, oh, shut up. <laughs> so you don't have to be. It's with intent. And what makes us happy? 
universally there's something that makes us happy. It's very simple, free of worry, number one. All of us would agree with that. Now it begins to be, and really what makes us happy is having a spiritual insight. Those two are universal. I don't care whether you're a fundamentalist, Mormon, Catholic, Lutheran, whatever. If you found in your heart what makes you peaceful, not totally at peace, but peaceful in your belief, righteous in your belief, there is a certain degree of happiness. She goes on in that um, video talking about positivity and all about happiness. It's always about what you can do to attain your own happiness. And she said that um, being free of worry universally makes us all happy. Now, she never mentions the fact that we're not in control of you know, good things and bad things and that, you know, we are sinners that need to be saved. And it's Jesus who is the one who saves us, who rescues us out of the bondage to sin. It's not us. And it's not about happiness. It's about joy in Christ. You can do lots of things to try and be happy temporarily. And she gave that temporary feeling to people. She was all about getting that feeling. But what we really need is joy in Christ. That's the only place that we can, that we can find that. Um, and when she refers to us, um, another thing that would make us worry free or happy, a spiritual insight. And she goes on to say, Hey, any religion that you have, if you are a fundamentalist, if you are a Mormon, a Catholic, whatever, um, if you believe your belief is righteous, what that blew my mind when she used the word righteous and i kept thinking okay satan masquerades as an angel of light and it's no wonder that his servants would masquerade as servants of righteousness we're not righteous not any single one of us we actually need jesus christ and to accept the free gift of salvation his finished work on the cross that paid for our sin and when we do that his righteousness is imputed onto us it's an it's a miraculous amazing gift from god that transaction of saying hey i'm a sinner jesus took my sin he took the penalty because in my sin i can't go and be with a holy god so she's talking about righteousness well we need jesus to be righteous none of us are good and she was telling people that it's all about you what you can do and you can be worry free and you can be happy wow very deceiving. Very deceiving. Just like her readings. I want to show a clip of um, a, a really just a heartbreaking false reading that she did. This is for Opal Joe Jennings. And so this was uh, a case in um, 1999. And of course, this is about the time she started going on Montel Williams show. So Sylvia Brown told the grandmother of Opal Joe Jennings that her granddaughter was sold into slavery in Japan when she actually was had been murdered in Fort Worth, Texas, was found there. But this is what happened. So in March 1999, Opal was kidnapped from her grandparents' front yard in Texas. I mean, just heartbreaking. She was playing with her cousin when suddenly a man forcibly grabbed her and threw her into his truck. He hit her as she screamed and drove off before anyone could do anything to rescue her. So her heartbroken grandmother, desperate for answers, went on Montel's show. There are also some people she's hurt. For instance, on the Montel Williams show in 1999, Brown shared this information with the grandmother of a missing child named Opal Joe Jennings. She's not dead, but what bothers me, now I've never heard of this before, but for some reason she was taken and put into some kind of slavery thing and taken into Japan. Four years later, the little girl's remains were found near Fort Worth, Texas. An autopsy showed she was killed shortly after vanishing. She was found, of course, as we said. And you know, know. information yeah. like that, just thinking if I had a grandchild that was taken or missing, and if, some, if a medium told me, I mean, obviously I wouldn't see a medium, but you know, back in the day, if I heard that in a reading, I, I went to a reading and I heard that, that would send me on a hunt for, for the child. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, exhausting yeah. Yeah. all resources. You'd probably, probably fly to Japan. I would end up in Japan yeah. looking for this child. Um, and um, yeah, the coroner said it looked like she was killed the, the same night she was abducted. What a terrible shame. Yeah. That's a terrible shame. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's all around just heartbreaking. And yeah. Sylvia Brown telling people these things. I mean, she, Sylvia Brown may have been deluded enough to think that she was really helping like you and I were, mm -hmm. um, you and I were wrong too, when we were psychics. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah, of course. Uh, we, just, it, we just did have some, some sense of empathy and compassion, which is, is really the point. It doesn't matter. Look at Doreen and I, I mean, you know, caring and thinking we're helping and wanting to help people doesn't make it any better than Sylvia Brown. No, um, but no. she just had such a, she just had that demeanor that really points to um, possession and severe demonic oppression. Because if you think about who the devil is um, and the traits of the evil one, just like you mentioned before, you know, that harshness, you know, hateful, mean, cruel, no empathy, no sympathy. Um, that really, I think that when we test the spirits, you can also see by how some, when somebody's acting that way, they're not operating um, with the Holy spirit that they, they don't have the Holy spirit. Not mm. that she claimed she did, but even if you're going to claim you're helping somebody and don't be fooled again, the whole point of this video really, and, and layering all of these instances is to let you know, the viewer that you should not fall for any of her work. Don't get her books. I've said it before I'm saying it again. And by the way, um, you know, a prophet, even if you want to go there, a prophet never got anything wrong. Mm -hmm. There was never right. any prophecy that was wrong when someone was being spoken directly to by God. And a prophet, mm -hmm. um, of course, was ordained by God. A psychic goes outside of God's will and boundaries yeah. uh, supernaturally to attain knowledge. And Sylvia and we're not disputing that she really was talking to demons and really doing the readings. Um, we're not saying she was a fraud, right? We're not saying she was a fraud or a, a fake medium. Um, are we? She, well, she, I mean, <laughs> all, all mediums are fake, really. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm not like, I'm not saying she's, you know, that person that's just going to crack an egg over your head and, you I, know, I, I mean, out, you know, her style was very different than yeah I'm, I never saw you as a psychic but um I remember one time at one of her workshops someone stood up and said Sylvia when will I meet my soulmate Sylvia goes April next that was oh. it that was the reading <laughs> that was the reading and she probably got paid big bucks for that oh. she did yeah. yeah 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 I mean it's wow. just her there was no warmth or fuzzy uh ness at all I mean it Honestly, it was probably more honest because demons aren't warm and fuzzy and you and yeah. I were. And, and so we were, we were probably more dangerous in that way. Cause it made it look like, yeah. Like I said, in our last video, I think with Dolores Cannon, I like was business casual. I was wearing clothes from the gap. Yeah, I'm like yeah. your girl next door. I'm crying with the clients. Like I'm not saying, Hey, you know, so-and-so, Hey honey, you know, I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm sorry. But I really was I would say a very down to earth person, believe it or not. Um, very, you know, girl next door. Mm -hmm. I would get you the groceries if you needed them, really care about you um, and, and a nice demeanor, but it doesn't, but that's, very, that is very dangerous because it's not bold in your face, demonic, yeah. you know? But so then what was the attraction? Hey D, let's, let's, so what's the attraction? So Sylvia Brown is outright mean to yeah. people. Yeah messing up left and right publicly because again yeah. remember this is public this is right oh yeah books. and there was a man who was after her who before he passed he had a website called stop and he passed so that's taken down but there's still a lot of people out there exposing her and and yet the the people I, I kind i went into some of the sylvia brown fan groups on facebook i lurked <laughs> and, and, and what I found the number one comment was, is that this is, they wanted to know about their loved one and they were asking other group members of this group, not Sylvia Brown. They knew she was dead, but they were asking group members to give them readings. Where's my loved one. And so oh, it, boy. so the, it seemed like the attraction was wanting to get comfort about they'd lost someone and then wanting to predict and control the future too. Mm -hmm. 
which is a human ego trait, of course, you know, yeah. we can't, only God knows the future. God creates the future and we're to trust him with all of our heart, not to lean on our own understanding or lean on Sylvia Brown's understanding. Uh, and, and we're seeing that today too. There was um, recently um, some psychics are back again with the World War III predictions. And this is considering that, like Doreen just said, demons don't know. They really don't know. So when you're listening to these predictions, it's provoking fear. What can I do? What should I, should I move? Should I store food? Should I do this? Should I do that? In fact, God commands us to rejoice always. And, and he doesn't promise us tomorrow. We have today, only God knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So for today, he even says, cast your cares upon me. He says not to be anxious for anything. So what these people are saying is provoking the exact feelings, the confusions, the doubts, yeah. the anxiety that come from the evil one. We right. don't have to worry about World War III. I mean, I'm not saying that we're not to be wise. We go to God for his wisdom. We ask him for his wisdom and he'll give it to us. That's what he says in the book of James. That's right. Um, yeah. And, so. and he'll, he'll protect who he wants to protect. And he'll, he'll, you know, whoever, whatever happens is what is God's will. Because exactly. as much as we get mad at this, this, these elites, yeah. you know, we get mad at them. Um, they're not in charge. It's God who's king. Jesus is king of kings. Jesus I'm is so Lord of Lords. Said that. Yeah. And one of the things I just want to mention um, is that when, because every year I would do a, an Oracle card reading for the mm -hmm. year and kind of prediction for the year. And I remember doing a prediction about some of the things that came true later and people would write to me and go, look, you were right back then. Mm -hmm. But a, a lot of it was uh, demon fed, but some of them I just want to admit right now is because I was really obsessed with the, um, the, the deep kind of um youtube videos and oh boy people, well they were they were allowed back then yeah and so i would be reading my husband calls them conspiracy theories a lot of them have come <laughs> true but I, I was reading about what china was up to i was reading about some of the patents going on with viruses and so i was reading all this stuff that was and so you didn't have to be a psychic to or a prophet to predict mm -hmm because they were reporting the stuff that was going on in these kind of underground news sites that I was frequenting. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have come true. And a lot of them I relayed to other people. And, mm -hmm. and now people go, look, you were right back then. And I was like, that was because I would, I was listening to health ranger, or Alex mm -hmm. Jones or something. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. And Sylvia and I were both on um, coast to coast, which used to be the art bell show. And so a mm -hmm. lot of that stuff would come from that kind of a show too. Oh, wow. Yeah, but yeah. you still make a good point, too. I had on a much smaller scale because I didn't have uh, Doreen's platform. I was just a little hidden psychic on Long Island here. But um, um, a woman who uh, I read, Ed, that was my daughter's friend's mom, and she was very much into witchcraft, very much into psychics. And of course, I was a psychic at the time. And when I was saved, I witnessed to her. I asked her if I could come and talk to her. And all she had to report to me was, yeah, but you said this and it came true. And, you know, Jen, that's good for you and whatever works for you. Um, and, you know, it's not about us. It's about God. There's not my truth and your truth. And there's one truth. And Jesus said he is the way, the truth and the life. And again, it doesn't matter what came true or didn't come true in the readings. What matters is that it's a reading. Um, whether it's a medical medium reading, whether it's some, you know, a Sylvia Brown reading, a Sylvia Brown prediction. Um, and we did it as well um, in the past. We're both very sorry about that. I'm very, I am so yeah. sorry. Yeah. It's so, it's so destructive. It's Learn so from our mistakes, please. Please. Yeah. Because, because then the, the, it came crushing down on me that when I realized my sin and that's the whole thing, guys, we realize our sin we are sinners, um, but we do have a savior who, who paid for it. I mean, we don't deserve, we deserve hell. Mm -hmm. We do. We deserve mm -hmm. hell. We have broken God's law and we deserve to go to hell, but God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So it's not even just, that's an action. It's not like God saying, yeah, I love you. Okay. No, he did something. He sent his only son to take our sin to take our penalty for our sins rather who he was our propitiation he appeased god's wrath that's right that's direct that really we deserve 
Um, and when you're saved um, and you accept that free gift and the Holy Spirit comes to live within you, the truth is when it was re when God revealed to me what I was doing when I, as a psychic medium, and then as time went by, like the first few months of my walk day, I more and more memories would come back to me of readings. And I was, I just felt honestly beyond sorry that I couldn't even, that I was engaging in that. I mean, I had, this is, you know, whatever you do with this, but I had a reading with a young man, he was 17 and he had a brain tumor and his parents hired me to come and talk to him because he was afraid to die. I was a medium. And, you know, I think back, it's not even just about, I look back what I said, it's what I didn't say and because I didn't know it, the gospel, that boy needed the gospel and I, and he did die. And I can only pray that somebody was able to share it with him. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so the point is, but this is, but, but I think it's good that we're putting that truth out there and putting our, I mean, the truth out there and putting our hearts out there, D, because we're not attacking Sylvia Brown and, and people. Um, if Sylvia was here today, we'd be praying for her soul. Mm -hmm. We're praying for your soul. We're showing you that this is demonic. This is a battle for your soul. It, that, you know, there's, heaven or hell guys we're going to put it that way i'm going to put it that way and you don't know when you're going that's the bottom line it's not a fear tactic it's the bottom line it's the truth today could be my day that i close my eyes and go home to be with the lord and i i thank him that i know him i thank him for my salvation but if you're if you're not sure where you are today you can and ask we we would love to share the gospel with you we're sharing it right now the good news um, and come to Christ today. This could be your day of salvation. Jesus saved me when I was a psychic medium. I didn't change first. I wasn't Mr. Perfect. I didn't have to do anything. It's about what he did and he saved me and I accepted. And that's all you have to do today. It doesn't matter what you've done. Bring it to him today. I just, I think they right. need to know. I think people need to know that. And we're putting our life right before you. We're saying, look at us. This is what we did. We're sorry for it, but we did it. We did what Sylvia Brown did. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're no different than her. Yes. Um, we're trying to point out because if you're still seeing her books or you're God forbid in one of those fan clubs, wow. Or taking courses that she had started or anything like that, please get out of those things. It is destructive for you. Demonic oppression includes anxiety, illness. It really, does, it really can affect your health. Um, stress, depression, and of course, steering you away from God, the only one who can actually help you, comfort you, give you peace, and give you eternal life. We don't want to see that happen for anybody else, no. um, the, the road that we were on. Absolutely not. Um, the New Age teaches wrongly that everyone goes to heaven because God is love, but they define love unbiblically. They say that his that the love of God means that everybody, everyone goes to heaven. Y'all, y'all go to heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, occasionally they might say, well, Hitler's not there, but everyone else is there. And, and this is just, this is so dangerous because Jesus himself recorded by the men who traveled and lived with him for three, three and a half years. And he said, I am the way I am the truth. I am the life. No one gets to the father except through me. That was the apostle John, his closest, his closest friend, his closest disciple. And Amen. there's just no other way. So we pray for those who have ears to hear that the Holy Spirit will lift the veil and show you the demonic underbelly of these false teachings. We, we pray for the publishers of Sylvia's old books. Mm -hmm. We pray for anyone associated with Sylvia, her sons. Mm -hmm. We pray for everyone who is under that spell of darkness that you will turn away. You'll burn her old books, burn my old books um, and, and turn to the only one who can save our soul, Jesus, because he's the only one who was sinless on this earth. And you know, what's really good news that you don't have to be fooled by positive vibes and positive energy. The new age will tell you that here are all the answers to your success is being positive being, um, having a high frequency, a high vibration. And you know what? You can't have a positive outlook all the time. Things happen. My sister is grieving right now over the loss of her mom. And you want to know something? If it depended upon 
your positivity then, I guess you would be doomed, right, Dee? There are going to be moments that we don't feel so positive, yeah. that, that we feel sad. But again, it's not about us. That's putting the authority on you. That's making the control in your hands. And it's not about you. And that's actually liberating. That is yeah. not in our hands, that is in God's hands. And I can rest in him when I'm sad. I can Amen. go to him when I'm grievous and he's got me no matter what. It doesn't matter what I put out there to you. You know, I'm not gonna be <laughs> the nicest uh, general all the time, you know, make, you know, but, um, but that's really liberating. And I think that people, the new age twist everything to make it look like, come on, you deserve to have the power. You deserve mm -hmm. all these, you know, things and um, control and power, but but putting it in God's hands frees you. That's it right. really frees you up. It's there's so much freedom in Christ. Amen, sister. Yeah. So, well, I think um, we could go on and on. There's a lot of, there's a yeah. lot of false uh, predictions she made and some true, you know, the, but she, she claimed to be, I think 85% accurate, but those who statistically looked at her readings said it was pretty low. And there's a, uh, detectives and law enforcement officers who said that her her predictions of missing persons were never ever helpful or they weren't right they either were not helpful or they weren't right to find a missing body it just it was hype it was hype on the Montel Williams show and yeah. and this publisher and it you know at the end of the day it was all about um, getting money and getting fame and 100 percent 100 percent that's right. Those shows, and they're still doing it. They're still mm -hmm. doing it. Many, many TV shows, talk shows. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to say it. Dr. Mehmet Oz has psychics on like it's his, well, like it's his job. Well, it is now, but he was a doctor. So why? Because it's trending, D. Mm -hmm. it's, yep. There's nothing new under the sun. This has been going on for ages. Mm -hmm. But if it makes them money to have those people on their show, they're going to do it. They're going to keep up with the times. The right. devil is current and active. Keeps well, up with the times. He, he creates the times. Yeah. <laughs> he creates this culture, right? He creates yes. what's trendy. Right now he's, yes. he's trending witchcraft and, yeah. and he's celebrating because those all those folks, if they don't repent, are going to be in his lair, hell, for eternity. And then his competition with God, he seems to win souls for the dark side. And even though the witchcraft and the psychic, it seems like it gives people control and a lot of people, including if you read Sylvia's material, have been hurt by men. And so they reject anything they call patriarchal, like Christianity, oh. which is patriarchal. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, they So they go to goddesses or Sylvia Brown. She teaches the mother God heresy. Um, this, this is not going to heal your old wounds of being abused or abandoned by a man. That's not going to heal you. And it's definitely not going to save your soul. Um, you need to be the biblical counselor and a lot of prayer to help to heal those wounds. Right. Well, I, I hope you guys can feel and sense that Jen and I care deeply for you and we don't want you to go down the road we were on. Um, and especially those of you who are younger, gosh, if I could rewind my life, I would have, I mean, it's all God's will, but if I could, could have, if it was God's will, I would have started studying the Bible much younger. I would have been baptized much younger. I would have raised my kids in God's word, homeschooled them, kept them, you know, in uh, a godly environment, stayed married to their father. I mean, it, just so many regrets. So I hope that you will hear this and um, repent. We have to repent daily, but repenting means metanoia, change your mind. It means turning away from sin. And none of us can do that on our own strength. We have to pray for Jesus to give us the strength and to be our Lord and our savior. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you can look at people like us. I mean, he's in the life-changing business. I was happy doing what I was doing. I think you were happy doing what yeah. you were doing. And he took two sinners who were operating under demonic influence, serving the evil one directly and completely changed. He saved us and we changed our mind completely. And that was all on his strength and all seeing the truth. He opens the eyes of the blind guys. He did that for us. So I'm praying with my sister, Doreen, that your eyes would be open today. And I just want to say, listen, you know, we, we do have a lot on our plate. Um, but if you want a message, 
I know Dee will uh, link our stuff and I'll link some stuff down there too in the description box. Reach out, but give us a little grace. Dee, thank you so much for doing this video and, and your heart is so, I just, I just love talking to you all the time and sharing the gospel with you and exposing um, new age uh, deception. So thank you for coming on today. Thank you, Jen. I really appreciate your support. As you know, um, exposing the darkness of my former peers is not easy. It's easier for me to do videos about Joel Osteen, who I've never met. But I've really, since I toured with all these folks, I've got to expose and not put them down as people because that's how I was, but for the grace of God, but to expose their teachings. Amen. So thank you and for holding my hand through this. Oh, I love you, sis. Love you too.